What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I actually have a VGC best of three battle for you guys. Uh, we'll actually be using a very cool team that I built the other day involving Indeedee and Thievel. This time I didn't mispronounce it. I keep saying Indeedle Thievee for some reason. For some reason I keep doing that. So uh, leave a like for me mispronouncing things. Uh, let's try to shoot for 150, maybe 200 today. I'll say 150 because I don't want to feel like I didn't reach my goals. <laughs> but if you want to give me 200, I'll really appreciate it. Today we're going to be facing my buddy Mercury. Uh, they actually have a channel on YouTube that I'll be linking in the description down below. Uh, we've been friends on YouTube for a couple of years now, I think since 2018, 2017, sometime around then. It's been a long time, so I want to support them. But yeah, uh, let me go ahead and get this team to you guys. Now, this team, it's not completely EV'd right. Some of the EVs are slightly off from what I want uh, because I haven't adjusted them, but uh, I will still be leaving a uh, code for you guys in the description down below if you guys want to use it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll update it as soon as I actually get all the Pokemon I want uh, to the correct EV spreads. It's not like these are unusable EV spreads. They're just like not quite the ones I want. However, they are the ones that I used in the video the other day. So we should be good to go. We should be good to go. The whole gist of this team is basically using Unburdened Thievil and Choice Scarf Expanding Force in DD to um, kind of just like break through the early the early uh, parts of the game, like really soften up the team. And then from that point, something like uh, Incineroar or Terrakion will be able to clean up. Uh, but we also have uh, support Cobaberry Amoongus, which is really nice. Uh, I like the Cobaberry on my Amoongus because it just allows me to live pretty much any flying type hit at least once and then regenerator by switching back out. But yeah, uh, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And look at this. This is actually an amazing game for the lead I have. So I can go ahead and lead off with Ndidi Thievel here. Uh, because it should beat their uh, hyper offense psy spam lead. We're, we're pretty much doing psy spam versus psy spam. In the back, Amoongus seems great. Uh, Talonflame isn't too much of a threat with psychic terrain up. However, I am kind of concerned about Tailwind support. I think my last Pokemon, I'm kind of tempted to go with... Um, I'm kind of tempted to go with this Rotom Wash because it has a really nice matchup versus everything on his side of the field. But I also want to bring Terrakion or the Thumbnail. <laughs> I feel like that's just the thing I say now for the thumbnail. If if you already if you're like watching all the way without skipping, go ahead and comment for the thumbnail right now. Let me see. Let me think. All right, so Terrakion helps out versus the um, Groudon matchup. However, and it also helps out with Porygon Z unless it's Scarf, which I assume it is. Um. And it helps out with the Talonflame matchup. However, I think I just all around have a better time using. Um, using Rotom here, he doesn't he doesn't have too many special defensive powerhouses either. Like, if he has like a Salt Vest a Zoom Roll, that might be slightly hard to break through, but I should be fine. I don't really need a physical attacker to get through this game, but let's see how it plays out. Let's see how it plays out. Mercury is actually a really really talented player from Australia, so I wouldn't be surprised if I end up losing this set. I at least want to take one game though. All right, let's get into it. Also, we reached 12,000 subscribers today. I, I forgot to mention that. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that you guys are like that. That's amazing. All right, so we see Talonflame and uh, this Porygon Z. Now, uh, it's probably my best interest just to go for a Snarl straight off and switch out my Ndidi. The reason being uh, is I'll be able to get rid of the priority on the flying type moves and also sort of soften up this Porygon Z. I definitely don't want to take a hit from it. Let me think. Um, It might actually be in my best interest just to immediately Dynamax and remove that thing from the field. They're definitely going to Tailwind and go for a really powerful hit, so Snarl's in my best interest. I don't want to switch anything into this hit because it's going to be really tough to beat. Yeah, I'm gonna... Do I Dynamax or do I just Expanding Force and take the hit? I think I just Expanding Force and take the hit, actually. It'd be better to Dynamax my Rotom in the endgame. I'll, I'll, I'm willing to take the hit. I should outspeed the Porygon Z after the um, Tail one goes up anyways, because I believe I have a higher base speed. Thievil's got, like, base 90. I think it might tie for Porygon. Let me double check. Porygon has, like, a good speed tier. It might be 95. I'm kind of concerned about that. I might, I might have messed up here. This might be like an auto loss game one. Porygon Z is 90. 
depends if it's timid. I'm timid max speed on mine. I'm hoping that I'm going to end up being faster here. All right, we're good. We're good. I'm probably going to lose my Ndidi, but it isn't the worst thing ever. Evil's kind of more important for winning this match. There's the max strike. He's going to lower my speed a bit. Onto the Ndidi. That's perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to be slower than this Porygon Z. However, um, if I play my Rotom correctly, I should be good. Let me get in my Rotom. Now, I think it's probably in his best interest to um, to attack into this Rotom slot. So I'll actually go for a fake tier. Not a fake tiers. I'll go for a Snarl into the Porygon Z once more. And I'll go for my Max Guard. Because I don't think he's going to double into this uh, Thievil slot. It just doesn't make sense. But I do need to be careful with that Porygon Z the next game. Because this might have already been a loss, to be honest. I'm actually not certain if I take a Brave Bird from this range. With my uh, Thievil. I mean, by this range, I mean my full health. I have, like, max HP, but Evil's defense, without being boosted by anything, is kind of garbage. Like, let, let me take a look at this. Evil's defense stat is literally 58. I'm hoping my max HP will let me take a hit from town. There's the max guard. Hopefully we see a max strike coming into this slot. There's the dual wing beat. Okay, I can definitely take that. And I'm really hoping to see that max strike. As it goes into the feeble, what a call. What a call. On the bright side, though, um, I can definitely take a hit from this, uh, from this talent flame with my Amoogus. I'm thinking next game I have to lead Incineroar. Alright, so what's the play here? I think the play might be to uh, put this Porygon Z to sleep and remove the Talon Plane from the field. Let's give him the back. Yeah, that seems like it's my play. So what I'll do here is I'll just go for a Spore into the Porygon Z. Just accept whatever the Talon Plane goes for is, uh, is inevitable. And uh, go for this Max Geyser. I almost clicked Max Lightning, completely forgetting that I would that I would just uh, completely negate my Spore turn there. There's the Taunt, unfortunate. I didn't really have much else I could go for anyway, so I just went for it. There's the Max Strike, he's gonna lower my speed a bit. And gonna do a lot of damage. About half. On the bright side though, I get my Citrus Berry. I'm going to be removing this uh, talent point from the field. Now I'm assuming that move is coming off of Giga Impact or something powerful like that. Maybe Hyper Beam. So I'm I'm almost considering ignoring this Porygon Z next turn. If only for information. And I am setting up the rain. And I have one more turn of Dynamax. So what I'm thinking here is I might just ignore Porygon Z. Because if he goes for that, um, he goes for that recharge move, I'll be able to uh, get rid of it next turn. All right, there's the Alakazam. Gonna be hitting me with a really powerful expanding force here. Let's try to play for information. I'll uh, what do I do here? I just go for a Giga Drain with the Porygon Z, I suppose. And I'll go for a Max Geyser into Alakazam. Let's see what information we can gain. We know the moveset on Town Flame is going to be. Yeah, okay, so the next one's gonna KO me. Hyper Beam? Okay. So we revealed, yes, there is a recharge move on that thing. And we saw that I can actually take the Expanding Force.
is nice. Drop the Giga Drain, get like nothing. And I'll go ahead and I'll forfeit this match before I give him much more info. He still hasn't seen the Cobra Berry, but I assume he, he knows I have it. Because he just knows me as a player. Alright, so we'll forfeit here. Yes. But how can I adjust? Um, I'm thinking... Terrakion naturally outspeeds this thing. I might actually just lead off Terrakion and Incineroar. And play it safe that way. I can bring Feeble in the back as a switch in to, um, to Expanding Force. Uh, just in case they opt to bring it. Like as a lead, you know. Let me think. Because I can prevent that Tailwind from going up. Um, we might even see Protect on the first turn, which I wouldn't be too opposed to. Because uh, at the very least, uh, I'll be able to find out another move. Let's play with the same rules here. Yeah, I think regardless, I'm going to have to lead off with Incineroar here to prevent that Tailwind from going up. And we'll go with just random music, why not? <laughs> Alright, so we'll lead off, um... Cineroar Terrakion. I want to bring you in the back. And my last Pokemon, I, I definitely want to bring in Didi here. Like, I'm concerned about the Talonflame, but... I don't think they're going to be bringing this uh, Azumarill to the game, so... I should be fine. And also we found out that they do have Taunt on the Talonflame. Giving Talonflame dual wing beat is kind of concerning because now it has like a, a max airstream move and a uh, <laughs> and a um, spammable priority flying type move that doesn't take recoil. At the very least we know it doesn't have Brave Bird. So I'm assuming the moveset's going to be like overheat, dual wing, either overheat or dual wing beat. Uh, or I mean overheat or flamethrower. Or Flare Blitz, one of those moves. Some some tend to run Overheat because it's better for Ferrothorn. Um, and then Taunt and Tailwind and Dual Wing. I don't think they're going to be running two flying moves. Porygon's the Azumarill. There's the Azumarill. That's concerning. However, kind of cool with this. Now the question is, do I taunt into this Azumarill, assuming it's going to be going for Belly Drum? I think my play here might be parting shot into the Azumarill, since I'm probably faster. Those base speed again? I always forget Azumarill's base speed, because it's an Aqua Jet Pokemon. Base 50. Yeah, so I'll be faster most likely, because I have a decent amount of speed investment here. And I think I'm just going to Dynamax straight off and Max Knuckle into this Porygon Z, because I really don't want it to uh, set up on me. Or not set up on me, but um, be able to get like a free hit off. I'd like to remove it from the field immediately. And at the very least, at minus two, I'll be able to take a hit from uh, Azumarill. I'm not certain if I actually take a hit from Porygon Z with my uh, Incineroar, though. That is something concerning to me. Porygon Z protects. I get my max knuckle off, get plus one. And I'll be able to parting shot out here and get in my Indeedee, which will prevent them from uh, being able to go for Aqua Jet in case they decide to go for that uh, the next turn. And I'll be able to uh, spam Expanding Force. There's my parting shot. At minus two, I'm, I'm pretty certain I'll be able to take this with Indeedee. Get an Angie here. Angie baby. I love how angry this uh, stupid little Pokemon looks. Get my Psychic Surge up. Possibly prevent uh, Aqua Jet Sweep. But I doubt they went for that. There's the Belly Drum. Okay, cool. I prevented the, uh, the Belly Drum Aqua Jet Sweep, which is nice. Because I think my play here is just Expanding Force Max Rock Ball into the uh, Azumarill slot, assuming that they're going to Dynamax it. 
And plus one max rock ball plus expanding force should definitely be, pick, uh, be picking up a KO here. Yeah, if they Dynamax anything here, it's going to be the Azumarill. There's no way they Dynamax Porygon Z. They might max guard though. They could uh, Dynamax max guard. And that wouldn't be the best, but I still think uh, I'm fine. Like, plus one max rock ball is going to be doing chunks. Alright. This thing's got a really good HP set, though. Like, I haven't seen this thing Dynamax yet, so I'm kind of concerned. Like, as to how much damage you can put out. But plus one max rock ball? It's looking like... It's looking like it's in range. It's looking like it's in range. Come on, baby. At the very least, it'll drop to the sand damage. Beautiful. Okay, I think I win. And Didi and uh, Terrakion kind of clean up from this point. Okay, he doesn't have much for the combination, because I can just bring in Thievul in the back in case he does have the, um, the uh, Alakazam. Blake. Who is Blake? Indeedy. Alakazam. Alright, um, I have Evil and the boy in the back, so this isn't really too much of a concern. There's the Psychic Seed. Interesting. Yeah, I have uh, two Dark Types in the back, so I should be able to win. Not really concerned. Uh, I'll just Expanding Force for damage, and uh, I'll Max Rock Fall to the Alakazam, because I'm more concerned about it. I don't need Terrakion to win this anymore. My expanding force is going to be doing some pretty decent damage. There's his expanding force. He's gonna. Ooh, I don't lose my uh, my Terrakion, which means I should definitely take another one. Thank you, Sand. The sandstorm saves me there. Beautiful. All right, that's going to be game two. So I did manage to get game up in Mercury, which is honestly something that doesn't happen too often. They're they're like really really good at this game. I think I just continue to make the Terrakion and, uh, the Terrakion and Incineroar lead just because it covers so many bases here. Uh, it probably should have been what I did game one, but I was, I was too excited to get to NDD Feeble, you know? <laughs> I was just a little bit too excited. Alright. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that same lead. I, I don't wanna think about it too much. Because if I think about it enough, I'll actually just start questioning my plays. And uh, while that is a good thing to do, sometimes you need to go with your gut, you know? Alright, side spam. And let's let the battle begin. Now the reason I'm running Lumberry Terrakion, ironically, not ironically, I guess, strangely enough, um is not because I'm concerned about getting burnt on it, which is usually the reason you run a Lumberry on a Terrakion, but rather because I'm concerned about getting poison, or not poison, slept. Um, like, I already have the safety goggles on my Incineroar, which helps me with my Moongus matchup, but just having that Lumberry uh, as a different item that, you know, you're allowed to use uh, does help you out quite a bit. But we're gonna lead off the same way, bring the exact same Pokemon. I think it's a relatively good matchup versus this team. Yeah, because I'm thinking about all the different things they could do. Um, by leading off with Incineroar, I'm able to fake out the Talonflame game one, or turn one. I'm able to um, pressure the Psy Spam lead. I'm able to even fake out the Porygon Z if they decide to do it. And with Terrakion, I, I threaten Porygon Z way too much for him to uh, just let me take it. They might not even they might not even bring Porygon Z this game. In fact, they might adjust and bring like, uh, I don't know. They, they might bring, like, Duraldon. <laughs> Duraldon doesn't have a great matchup versus me. It has really bad special defense, and uh, it doesn't really take hits from Terrakion all that well. Despite it having a great defense stat. Just because Terrakion's a monster. Now, 
They're definitely taking their time here. About 10 seconds left. I'm kind of... I kind of really want to go with the beat-up Thievil strat. <laughs> like, I really want to be able to click it at some point in this game. The, uh, the taunt, or not the taunt, the fake out there. However, I can get in my own Ndidi, and I'm not really in a bad position. I can just rock slide here. I'm assuming they're going to go ahead and uh, belly drum up. But my rock slide will be faster in both of these, and if they don't go for a follow me, I would call that a misplay. If they expanding force, I'm going to be in big trouble, though. <laughs> I'm going to be in big trouble. Um, let me parting shot on this Azumarill in the off chance it does decide to belly drum. Or in the off chance it decides to attack into the um, Incineroar slot instead of belly drumming. And I'll go for a rock slide here. I know I could go for taunt onto that um, Azumarill, assuming it's going to belly drum, but I'm, I'm, I'm very certain they're going to... Oh, wait, no. Does this version of Ndidi get follow me? Are they using male Ndidi? Can't tell. I forget if male Ndidi gets follow me. Let me check. I have 22 seconds. You don't see it. it doesn't get follow me. I should taunt. Yeah, I'm taunting that at a zoom roll right now. Because they're going to parting shot. fine with that. Let me get in my Ndidi. I'm willing to sacrifice this Terrakion for that. And now I get in Ndidi and Feeble. Ooh, I probably could have played that a lot better. I definitely could have played that a lot better, but I was scared. <laughs> I was scared. I, I don't know why. I was looking at it and I was like, oh yeah, follow me uh, Belly Drum. And I'm like, wait a second. That isn't a thing. Alright, so now this thing is perpetually at minus one. And I get my Ndidi. And I can go for uh, Fake Tears and Expanding Force. And there isn't much that wants to switch in on that. Let me go for this Fake Tears onto that Azumarill. Go for this Expanding Force for massive damage. I'm going to Expanding Force into that Ndidi slot because if Azumarill protects... I, I'm actually not sure how the move works. Still, I feel like if Azumarill protects, it won't actually work. Like, I think you have to target the right Pokemon. I'm assuming Ndidi's not protecting here. This is an intense game. This is a real intense game. I had to sack Terrakion, which I'm not a fan of. But I think I'm in a pretty decent spot. It, it's kind of 50-50, actually. Like we're both kind of on our on our on the edge of our seats, I think. Like what happens from this point on? I'm definitely gonna have to take a really powerful hit. Ooh, <laughs> we get the KO on the Azumarill. I wasn't certain if we were gonna get it. Let's see if we see like a dazzling gleam. There's the imprison, so he's gonna prevent me from using that move. However, I still have Snarl, which is really, really nice. Um, and I could Dynamax, actually. I could Dynamax and still pick up some KOs. In fact, that might be my play. My play here... Let me think. I'm modest max speed, and I think he's gonna be modest on his, uh, Porygon Z. I think it's in my best interest to, um... Do I knock out this Porygon Z? I don't know. I'm not certain. Oh, I was not aware that I... Okay, well that sucks. Um, I lost. I, I was not aware that by clicking attack, I wasn't given the opportunity to Dynamax because of Imprisonment. I, I wasn't aware that that's how that worked. Which kind of sucks, because now I just lose. Alright, well that's unfortunate. 
Because I was gonna Dynamax right there, and it's like, hey, no, you're locked into uh to this attack. Whoops. That sucks. Well, maybe it's not over. Maybe they uh, they uh, targeted it into evil. Okay, they did target into evil. However, I'm still locked in, which is not good. Go ahead and pass it in there. I was trying Dynamax, but by clicking. That sucks! But by clicking attack, it just went struggle. That sucks, man. Looks like I have to Dynamax this stupid Incineroar. So we'll max player that Porygon Z, hope for a crit. I don't like that it doesn't even like him. Because here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. If you... If, if you, like, want to use a move... Like, let's say that you're, like, um... You're on... Not on board. Let's say that you have a move in, uh... I don't know how you're trying to say it. If you have a choice scarf, right? If you have a choice scarf in this game... It still gives you the option to select other moves, it just tells you you cannot. However, with this situation, it was just like, what other move? <laughs> We're gonna struggle here. Gonna bit of, get, get a bit of damage off. Kinda wish I had like Overheat and Cinero, that could allow me to win. This Max Strike's gonna hurt. Uh, tell me there's an Alkazam in the back and I critical hit right here. Tell me I just land like the world's greatest crit. Alright, well that's gonna be game. I'm a little bit upset with how that ended. Like I legitimately didn't know just by clicking attack I wouldn't be able to, to use a move. But that's what you get when you don't practice enough. Uh, <laughs> regardless, I think that... Um, I think that Mercury's team was really, really solid. Uh, I, I think I could have won this game had I not messed up right there, but it's cool. It's cool. That's just the way the game goes. Uh, yeah, th my opponent is super, super talented, though. Go ahead and subscribe to them on YouTube. I, I, they've been doing YouTube for a while, and they have some really good videos, so uh, I'll link them in the description down below. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this battle at any point in time, make sure you leave a like, subscribe for more Pokemon content, because I'll try not to lose next time. I'll try not to lose next time, but I will upload my losses, because you guys know that we all lose sometimes. We're not all perfect, and we need to recognize that to grow. Yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.